Hi everybody, and welcome to this new episode of SageMaker Fridays, Season 4. And I think this is Episode 7 today, right? My name is Julian, I'm a Principal Developer Advocate focusing on AI and Machine Learning, and I think by now you know my co-presenter. <laughs> yes, thank you Julian. So, hi everyone, my name is Tegelen, and I'm a Senior Data Scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get the ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you for being with us. So where are we in this season? So yeah, we are uh, at episode seven, and that means today we are still discussing automation, mm -hmm. deployment, um, ops topics. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And uh, in this particular episode, we are revisiting our uh, computer vision example. From the healthcare. Uh, yeah, from, uh, yeah, from episode three, actually. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do today, Sego? So, if you remember well, we, uh, during the last episode, uh, the previous episode, we work on classifying uh, medical image in order to detect uh, cancerous uh, cells. Right. So we did it um, in um, in August, and now we are going to see how to automate uh, the process, plus bonus, uh, how to label data uh, in case you have uh, data to label. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we we I must have said at some point. Oh, we'll show you data labeling. Okay, so we'll show you image labeling. Actually. Image. Labeling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is the example we're going to uh, to cover today. Uh, so take a screenshot, and I'll try and show it again uh, before the end of the episode okay all right so let's jump to our notebook mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we should start with a, a quick recap mm -hmm. of uh, of the problem we are covering um, so we start from uh, a data set of medical images mm -hmm. and let me show you uh, let me show you some examples. I think we have, contains, yeah, we have some samples here. Yeah, which contains metastasis or not metastasis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're going to train our classification model on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we did in, uh, in episode uh, uh, three. Three, right? exactly. Um, we trained the model. We'll, we'll revisit quickly those steps. Uh, but there's an assumption here, right? And the assumption is we have labeled data. Mm -hmm. Yes? So um, doctors, uh, experts, experts have actually looked at, at the data set and they have labeled uh, those different images as showing uh, metastasis cells or, or not. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, but, what, but, yeah, yes. but that's a lot of work, right? <laughs> yeah, and in, in real life, you generally do not have a labeled data set, right? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about... Um, labeling some of those images mm -hmm. ourselves and of course okay there's a huge disclaimer okay yes. um, none of us <laughs> no, 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 is a medical no. doctor so uh, we're gonna try and label those images but yeah we're certainly gonna make some mistakes uh okay so apologies if uh if uh specialists and doctors are watching this uh we are just showing you the the technical capability and of yeah. course we are not showing you that we know anything about, <laughs> about the things. actual uh, medical problem here Okay, um, so let's take a look at, uh, at the data set itself. So the data set itself, oops, wrong example, here it is. Data set itself is, um, is a single file. It's an HDF5 uh, mm -hmm. file, which packs all the images, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, as the NumPy arrays. Mm -hmm. So not really, not really convenient, but then again, in real life, we would certainly start from individual images, okay, which we would label, and and then we would pack the images and the labels into that file. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so what I've done actually is um, I've written uh, a few lines of uh, kindergarten Python <laughs> <laughs> to extract some images mm -hmm. from the uh, from the HDF file. Uh, so. Take a screenshot, but run this at your own risk. Okay, <laughs> it's just opening the file and saving. In this case, ten images and printing out the labels. Okay, just for sanity checks. Okay, so now what I have is uh, those ten images. Okay, and uh, we can actually see them here. Okay, right. So. Just 10 images. They're really small images, by the way. They're 96 by 96 pixels. So mm -hmm. that's why they're all small here. Okay, so these are our 
images. Again, this is what we're trying to label. So the first step is uh, put that stuff in an S3 bucket, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so just upload those images, which I've done here. And now we can go and we can work with SageMaker Good Ground Truth. Truth. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. And maybe go full screen as well. And the first step is to define uh, a workforce. Mm -hmm. So a team. And what is Ground Truth? Is gonna... So Ground Truth is uh, basically um, is a SageMaker capability that helps us label data. Mm. Okay, so we can label images, texts, um, 3D point clouds for mm -hmm. autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very cool uh, example. Um, and we can build custom custom workflows. Okay, so obviously we need um, people who know what they're doing. Okay, so in this case, <laughs> neither of us. <laughs> but uh, you can create your workforce and you literally have three options. Um, so if you work at super large scale, you can use Mechanical Turk. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can distribute the labeling work to tens of thousands of workers. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can work with vendor workforces, okay? So uh, AWS partners uh, who can provide uh, specialized teams for particular problems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, autonomous driving, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can create a private workforce, okay? And uh, private workforce is just a list of people, people you know, people in your company, uh, people okay. in your uh, hospital, in this case, people mm -hmm. who know what to do with those images, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and I'm not clicking on this one because there's my personal email address in there. So <laughs> I don't want to show it to you. Okay, sorry. So I've created a workforce and it's just me. Okay, so it's not a very powerful workforce, uh, but it's just me. Okay, and um, still we'll we'll do we'll work with that. Okay. So once we have that workforce, um, we can now create a labeling job. Okay. So the first step is to give our job a name. Okay, so let's. Do this meta stasis job. Mm -hmm. um, then we need to pass the location uh, of our images. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the cool thing is, Ground Truth will actually crawl this location okay. and um, and build a list of uh, objects. Okay. Um, you could also pass. Um, uh, your own list. If you wanted to label a subset mm -hmm. of that uh, collection, uh, you can pass a file and, and uh, it's called the input manifest file. But here we're just uh, doing it the easy way. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, data type. Okay. So, of course, in this case, we are working with images and an IAM role giving ground truth permissions to access that bucket. Okay. okay. And you can certainly use your. Uh, existing SageMaker role, if uh, if you use one of those SageMaker buckets, it should work. And then click on this. Okay, so it's going to check that location, mm. check that you can access it, pull the, the, the objects that are present there, build a manifest file. Okay, um, we could do a little more. We could work on the full data set. We could work on a sample. Uh, mm. We could write a query um, mm. to select particular objects. Okay, so okay. that's pretty cool stuff. Here, just do 10 images, okay? <laughs> and of course, if the objects are, uh, if we want to encrypt the output, we could pass a KMS key for encryption as usual. So next, we select the task type, okay? So we can see image, text, or video, of I course, uh, yeah, yeah. point clouds, yeah. or custom tasks. So here, we're working with images, and we want to do image classification, okay? We could single label. Single we, label, We could yeah. do multi-label. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could do bounding boxes for object detection use cases, or we could do segmentation uh, to um, to uh, segment uh, certain objects in our images and label verification. Okay, oh. so we could have a labeling task and a label verification task. Okay, okay. which for important images like these make, make probably makes sense, sense. <laughs> especially if I'm labeling. <laughs> yes. All right, so just click on next. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm selecting the private team made of me and myself. Uh, we could set a timeout for, uh, for per worker. We can add a lot of different things. 
um, how many um, how many workers will mm -hmm. actually get to see each sample. Uh, if we had a real a real team, we could say, well, you know, each uh, each image to be labeled will be sent to let's say three five labelers, mm -hmm. and then of course the annotations are averaged. Okay. Okay. So um, gives you better accuracy, of course. Okay, so we're not going to do any of those. Uh, and so here we, we can and should provide examples. Okay. okay? Nice. Uh, for labeling, it's, it's I would say, pretty you know, basic. But if you do object detection mm -hmm. or object segmentation, you can actually customize this, uh, this page mm -hmm. and, uh, and show you know, really good instructions. So here we're going to keep it very basic. Um, Okay, so it's uh, only two labels. So the first one is no metastasis, and the other one will be metastasis. Okay, and these obviously are mapped to integers. Okay. Okay, so this label will be label zero, zero. this label will be one. one. Okay, so make sure you put them in the right order because I'm guessing in, in your machine learning problem, you want the metastasis images to be flagged as a one. Yes. Okay. I always get it wrong. So <laughs> try and be smarter than I am. Okay. Create. Okay. And so this will create the job. It takes a few minutes. So we're going to pause the video and we'll be right back when the job is ready for labeling. So once the job is, uh, is ready to go, um, we can actually uh, go to the workforce um, uh, tab here and we find uh, a link to the labeling portal. Okay. okay so each user, uh, each worker has a login and password and they can go and log into that portal. Okay. So I've already done that. And, um, and here we go. Okay. So I see that I've got some work, uh, on, uh, yep. On, uh, on labeling. Okay. So I just go and start working. Can we show instructions? Yes. Okay. Well, we just need to start working. Okay, and now I'm presented with uh, the different images in the data set, and I just need to figure out if um, if this is a, a, a metastatic, um, metastatic metastasis image or not. Okay, so again, apologies. Uh, I'm gonna say no on this one. Okay, um, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, move on to the next. No, no I'm gonna say no. Uh, I think this one is fine yes. <laughs> <laughs> from memory. Uh, this one doesn't look very good. Um, this no. one, you'd say no. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, this one looks off, really awful. So probably bad. This one doesn't look too great. <laughs> this is the reason why the level check checker. Yes. Obviously, <laughs> you need people who know what they're doing. <laughs> But so you can see how fast we can we can yeah. go here, right? Yeah. It's imagine if you, even if you had thousands and thousands of images, uh, and 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 people really know what they're looking at, you know, you can mm -hmm. go really quickly. Obviously, if you do object detection or segmentation, it's a little more work because you need to outline the particular area. But there are some graphical tools mm -hmm. that make it very very easy. Okay, so we're going to say this one's bad. This one doesn't look very good. Okay, so I, I uploaded 10 images to S3, uh, so now I'm done, okay? Um, so let's pause for a minute or two for the job to complete, and then we can see the annotations uh, in the SageMaker console, okay? I'll, we'll be right back. So now we see the job is complete, okay? And, uh, well, if we, if we open it, we see the, the output location, mm -hmm. right? And if we go there and follow uh, the manifest <laughs> path, we actually find this file called output.manifest, okay? And if we open this, um, we can actually see a JSON file. And of course, we have the list of images that we labeled, and we see uh, the label here, okay. right? 0, 1, 0, 1, etc., etc. Okay? So then we have the label data set, and we could just uh, go and, and parse this file, mm. right? and build uh, the actual machine learning data set with the images on, on one side and the label on the other side, okay? So 
See, and really, I showed you the whole thing in just a few minutes. You can start labeling your images uh, very, very easy. Um, and uh, and in fact, if you use the built-in, um, if you use the built-in uh, computer vision algorithms uh -huh. in uh, in SageMaker, uh, you can actually use this file uh, directly. Oh, okay. okay? Uh, I'll point you at the documentation, but uh, you can use the manifest file uh, as the input file. So you don't really need to uh, to build anything extra. Okay. okay. If you use TensorFlow, PyTorch, etc., you need to do a bit of processing. But for the built-ins, you could use this uh, thing uh, as is. Okay. All right. So I think we're done uh, with labeling, and we can <laughs> resume uh, our story here. Okay. So now we have labeled <laughs> data, um, and yes, we did uh, splits for training and validation. We, uh, we convert it to a record I.O., which is a, a packed uh, format. So the training set will be one file. The validation set will be one file with thousands of images. Okay, we've covered this stuff in detail previously. Create an estimator to train. Um, and we actually use hyperparameter tuning. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, go back to, uh, to episode three for all the details. We ran 20 jobs. Okay, so we run twenty jobs and we got some um, uh, we got some good results. Okay, all right. So I think that's where we stopped exactly last time around. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next step would be, of course, uh, deploying. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are creating some technical objects. Uh, we are grabbing the best model from the hyperparameter tuning job. And, and just like I think last week, uh, it's a little more complicated than necessary because uh, we are running in different notebooks. So if you run all of it in your notebook, you can go, you know, estimator.fit, estimator.deploy. Here we are just uh, loading the model again, right? Um, because we want to we wanna deploy it from a different notebook. Okay, but that's what we're doing here, right? So we are refer referring to the best model from the tuning job. Because again, the estimator, the tuning job context does not exist in this node. Mm -hmm. So we just need to refer to that model, okay? And then we'll just call deploy, right? Okay, so what happens here is SageMaker automatically creates an endpoint. Uh, we'll provision uh, an EC2 instance of the mm -hmm. appropriate instance type and, um, and create, uh, load the model, create the HTTPS API, and we can start. All right, and then of course we can predict. So we can just grab an image from our data set, okay? And I think last week we saw the predict API, which mm -hmm. is part of the SageMaker SDK. Um, there's another way to do it, uh, and this is the one you see here. Okay. We can use invoke endpoint, which is part of uh, Boto3. So Boto3 is the Python SDK for all the AWS services. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I tend to see it as lower level because we're working with, you know, uh, um, I would say lower level entities, mm -hmm. but it works very well. And in, in the case of SageMaker, it's actually very convenient because you can just say, hey, um, if I have the, an existing endpoint, um, even something that, you know, somebody created last week and I just want to invoke it, uh, then we just need to pass the endpoint name. Okay, um, okay in this mm -hmm. case, the, the correct MIME type and then the payload, which is the image as a as a byte array, so it's a it's a very easy way to invoke existing endpoints, right? Okay, a different way. Okay, so we predict it, uh, and of course we get uh, the probability for the two classes, um, and so um, this one is uh, yes, this one doesn't look very good. Mm -mm. And it scores very highly on the one class, mm -hmm. which means this is certainly uh, showing metastasis. Yes. Okay. So class mm -hmm. one. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's how we do this. Um, very simple. No infrastructure to manage. Mm -hmm. Call, uh, deploy, and uh, in the either predict in the SageMaker SDK or invoke endpoint in both of three. And there you go. Okay. Okay. So. So we've labeled and trained and deployed. And now we want. Now let's automate, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> okay, let's automate. 
Um, and let me close this thing here. So of course we are going to use SageMaker pipelines, mm -hmm. just like in, in previous episodes. And the game here is uh, really to um, uh, create each step mm -hmm. independently, and then combine them, and then run the pipeline. Okay. After it makes sense in a real life example uh, when you have uh, you've been doing such uh, a solution, uh, you want to automate it. Uh, yeah. Once you got new data. Sure. Sure. You. It, I think we discussed this last week mm. or the week before. Of course, initially, you know, explore your problem, mm -hmm. uh, work with the notebooks, and uh, and you know, once you're ready to go to production and and you want to deploy easily or reuse the pipeline on different data set, mm -hmm. different versions of your data set, or with different parameters, etc. Yeah, start automating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's really you know, if you feel oh it's redundant, you know, we're looking at the same thing. Uh, it's really the way we would be doing it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, get it to work and then automate it. Mm -mm. Okay, and that's I think the, the for me the the reasonable way to do. It. Okay, so here we how many steps do we have? Uh, we don't really have data prep steps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have the labeling step, which of course we already did. Um, so uh, in this case, we will have the train and deploy and register steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the model registry. So let's look at those steps. So first, of course, uh, the training step, and you can see um, the, the, it, the the there's not a lot of difference between uh, the, the syntax for mm. um, I would say a manual work and the syntax for pipeline work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty easy to adapt your notebook code to uh, to pipeline, right? Isn't the good news? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and then again, all, all the more it's all the more reason to you know get it to work first and then automate mm -hmm. later. It's not a lot of work to. It's not like you're gonna rewrite everything. Okay. Uh, okay. So, oh, there is a data prep step. Yeah, it's not really data prep. It's it's data formatting. Yes, we want to. Anymore. Yeah, we want. I forgot about that. So the first step, of course, is to split the data to convert the data in in record IO format. Okay. So we start from that uh, HDF file, okay, and we have a script, which is really exactly the the same code. Uh, split data, yeah, which is really exactly the same code we've run before. Only you know it's in a Python script, which we will run as a SageMaker processing step, okay. But it's the same function we used mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the notebook, and we split the data set in. Okay, so same code, except this time we are automating. Okay. All right. So we upload um, the data set to S3. We upload the script to S3. And we create the compute resource, which is a, a scikit-learn processor. Again, instance type, instance count. Not much more infrastructure work than this. And we define the processing step. Okay, so that's the first step of the pipeline. And the input, of course, is the input data set. And the outputs are the training, validation, and test set. Okay, the three splits. Mm. And of course, the code is the location of that script in S3. Okay. So generally, you know, just upload everything to S3, all the artifacts that you need, and configure your processing step. Okay, so that first step. Okay, second step is now training. Okay, <laughs> I was a little anxious to train. <laughs> um, and so uh, we have two inputs. We have the training data set, the training split, mm -hmm. and the validation, validation split. And we can see here, okay, and we saw this again last week. Um, we obviously we use the output from the processing step, okay, as the input for the training step. And so this connects automatically the the steps and this creates the pipeline. and it creates the the, the pipeline the, the graph pipeline. the execution graph okay and so the training step is just the estimator that we configured a few cells uh, before and the inputs we just defined okay right and the estimator is exactly what we saw above right okay here okay okay exact same parameters as in the the manual training job so to speak 
Okay, um, so once we've trained the model, remember we had this discussion last time around, um, we could go two ways. Uh, we could deploy, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and and uh, their um, pipelines does not provide a, a deploy step, yeah. okay? So we use um, a, a Python script to deploy the model. Okay, we'll see this. So that's one, uh, one way. And the other way is, um, we add the model to the model registry, mm -hmm. okay, with a certain status uh, telling us can we proceed and 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 use further automation mm -hmm. like cloud formation or your own scripts to go and deploy automatically, okay. And in fact, in this pipeline, we're going both ways, okay. So uh, we register the model, okay. So we add it to the model registry. Um, and we actually list the content type, the uh, response type, the uh, instance types that are allowed for um, uh, inference, okay, and the approval status, which is pending okay. manual, manual approval. approval. Okay. okay, so that model package is really just more. It's more than the model. It's the model and I would say deployment information, Con information. Con configuration, exactly. Okay, and so that gets added to the model registry. Uh, and the other way is, of course, uh, we um, add the model to SageMaker. And by now, you know, I really hate this create model uh, name uh, for the API. It shouldn't be called create. We're not creating. We're just adding the model to, uh, to SageMaker, okay? Making that S3 artifact something that we can deploy. And then we have another step, step which is deploy the model, okay? And we just run a deployment script uh, inside SageMaker processing, passing some hyperparameters, some um, uh, command line parameters, command. sorry. Okay, and the deployment is uh, just very simple, right? Create endpoint, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We've seen this before, okay? All right, so we have all our steps and we have some parameters for the pipeline here. Of course, where is the input data? What's the um, status for the model mm -hmm. that we add to the registry? And of course, all the steps. Okay, and remember, you don't need to pass them in order because uh, with the, you know, your output becomes my input mm -hmm. kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pipelines, uh, SageMaker pipelines figure, figures it out. Okay, uh, I think we saw last week exactly. how to explicitly connect steps, okay, using, uh, using dependencies, okay. So you can also force uh, the order of the steps if you have to, okay? And then we, um, well, we add the pipeline and we start execution, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go and see. So we would go here, yeah, uh, to pipelines and we see our pipeline here, which I already opened. Oh, oh, here, okay. So. Uh, run it once and it worked oh my god isn't gosh. that, isn't that amazing <laughs> it ran for 33 minutes okay so there's just one execution we can see the the graph. the graph the static graph okay okay so if you want to see the execution we just double click on this and yes okay we see the execution and remember if you need uh you know extra information you can zoom out maybe a bit uh, we can see inputs, we can see outputs, uh, we can see Super. logs, which are super useful. Remember, I showed you last week some mistakes that I made, right? And uh, you don't need to go to Cloud any, Watch. yeah, to CloudWatch or any other location. You can see uh, the log for that job here. And if it turns red, then something wrong happened, <laughs> okay? But in this case, it worked just fine, okay? So we did deploy the model, okay? Uh, so if we go to endpoints, I would think, yes, there is this uh, model here. This is the one actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can see uh, the uh, URL for the endpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which we're actually invoking. Mm -hmm. um, and we also registered the model. Okay. So if I go to the model registry. I think that's this one here. 
Okay, uh, yeah, I think this is the actual one here. Uh, got many versions, um, and we see we see the model, uh, which of course is pending manual approval because that's uh, how we've configured it. And again, the reason why you would want to do this is because, um, of course, there needs to be another part in your pipeline where you know someone or something takes the model in the registry mm -hmm. and deploys it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it could be it could be manual work. Mm -hmm. So someone could look at the model and say. Uh, you know, is it good? Uh, I can say, okay, yeah, it's a good model. All right. Um, just update it like that. Okay. And and that would, you know, be checked by your, you know, maybe your CI, CD mm. uh, tools, uh, or maybe you're using, uh, you know, cloud formation template, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. You need some kind of gate to tell you that, okay, yes, this model is good for it. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, and if you automate completely, you know, this could actually be checked by the code saying, well, wait a minute, you're passing me a model, uh, a model name or a model version mm -mm. in this model group that's not approved. So no, I'm not deploying. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many ways to do this, but the registry is where you will find uh, all information about your versions and, you know, approval history and uh, and settings etc cetera, etc cetera, okay so it's um it's a good central repository for for all the metadata and um, and, uh, and and the model okay so you can just do it just like that okay all right um what did i forget i think i think that's about it um i think yeah. that's about it uh oh yes of course so <laughs> the final thing Okay, so we saw the pipeline, okay, and of course, as you're going to run lots of jobs, lots of pipelines with different parameters, you know, at some point you want to know, um, you want to know yeah. where that model comes from, mm -hmm. okay? So that model in the model registry, what it, what is it, how is it built, mm -hmm. okay? And tracking that stuff is not very, very easy. Not okay? at all. <laughs> so... Uh, SageMaker Pipelines actually makes it very easy because as we, uh, let me try and find the graph again. Uh, yes, here it is, okay. So as we go through the steps, we know all the inputs, we know all the outputs. Mm -hmm. So can we build some kind of, you know, tracking system that, you know, just lets us know, hey, this step had those input and that, that output and, you know, just cascade all that stuff mm -mm. from step to step? And the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. And this is called uh, lineage tracking. And so um, it's been it's been built automatically by the pipeline. Mm -hmm. and I think it's automation is cool generally, but this is a very, very good reason to use SageMaker pipelines yeah. instead of trying and uh, try and build your own automation system. Right. Um, so this is really, really nice. So you can just call this a lineal lineage table visualizer object. Mm -hmm. And this gives you for each step of the pipeline, the inputs and the output. Okay. So for example, here, okay. Is this for, so, and we're looping, right? So that's what it's what we're doing here. Cool. We're looping over each step in the pipeline and we're printing the lineage information that we have. Mm -hmm. So for example, we see, um that the for the split data step okay so we had three inputs right the the code the script the script okay Submission. with the location right so you know exactly which script was mm -hmm. used mm -hmm. okay if you apply uh if you apply versioning to this you know it's it's uh bullet, it's pretty bulletproof uh the input data set okay okay and the image, which in this case doesn't mean image, it means Docker image. Docker, okay? Docker image, yeah. So it's the actual container that you run this code in, right, on this data set. Okay, and as we saw, we have three outputs. Okay. okay. This is the difference contributed to and produced. Okay. Exactly. So you can see that um, 
you can see all the artifacts and you can see you know are they inputs are they outputs so if you need to know how was i have this training set in s3 who built it mm -hmm. right well thanks to this lineage information you know exactly how this was uh, how this was run okay and of course you can get uh api information so uh, for training right we can see for the train model step again we see three inputs okay a training set okay which unsurprisingly is the output <laughs> this one. uh the validation set uh the docker image so in this case the image classification algo okay uh, version one and those Zero. three produced the, the model artifact in S3. Okay, and, <laughs> and we can continue like that. Okay, so register model has a model artifact as input. Um, the Docker image, because again, remember in this in the model registry, it's much more than the uh, actual model artifact. Okay, it's also the image that will be used for deployment. Uh, it's the approval status. Okay, so me entering my comment <laughs> is also tracked. Good to okay, it's an action this time. And of course, the output is the, the model package group that contains this. Okay, and, and here it's the deploy model uh, where we have the deployment script and the deployment image. And there's no real output. Right? Right. There's no artifact. The output is the endpoint. And so all this stuff is built automatically. And, uh, and so you can query it. Um, you can query your pipeline executions, um, as you can see, and uh, and just just like that, um, start from a, a pipeline and and figure out, you know, what actually happened here. Okay, so there you can also do this manually. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and this is actually part of the of the example. I think it's notebook three, three yeah. where uh, we show you how to build those um as, uh, how to associate those artifacts mm. with uh with the eapi um i'll say i'm not a huge fan of this mm. uh you know it, it is absolutely possible if you don't want to use pipeline you can still use the lineage api to mm. build all that stuff yourself um so go and, and check that notebook but generally i think you know using it in pipeline is it's, it's it comes for free right automatically yeah and <laughs> as everyone knows i am lazy and cheap and cheap yes yes, yes so yes, that, so free stuff free stuff free stuff no work to do right so <laughs> perfect dream feature for me right so give it a try okay i think we're almost done um so i think it's time to recap so yeah. so what did we see in this one so we revisited uh, our computer vision example okay and we actually jumped uh all the way to uh, um, uh labeling mm -hmm. okay um we extracted some images and in case you're interested i can show you where is my ugly code <laughs> okay <beautiful>. yes <laughs> so here's my kindergarten code if you really really insist uh, make a <laughs> screenshot uh, we extracted some images from the uh, from the data set, we label them with ground truth, um, and okay, uh, we saw you know a little bit of uh, training and uh, and tuning, uh, which were covered in detail last time, mm -hmm. and then we saw how to deploy once mm -hmm. again and how to automate with mm -hmm. pipeline and how to track. Uh, lineage which is uh, lineage. super super interesting right. once you have you know a thousand models and ten thousand data sets and it, it's critical that you know exactly okay what is this stuff where is it coming from different data uh, and set values. exactly yes yeah. uh, different versions of the same jobs etc mm -hmm. et okay so super nice all right so let me show you that slide once again okay this is the example we use today mm -hmm. okay so go and uh, go and run it and uh, have fun with computer vision, and uh, why don't why not try some labeling? Right, you can go and grab lots of image data set. I mean, ground truth is very very easy to yeah, to really use, right? Easy. So it's a it's a good thing. It's a good thing to learn. Okay, so I think that's uh, the end of this one. Uh, Sego, thank you very much. For thank your you help. so much.
you next week. And until next week, uh, we will revisit the retail uh, recommendation example. Yeah, exactly. And and we'll talk about automation again, of course. Okay. All right. Until then, have a good week. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.